My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Monster Train. We're going to be playing Primary and Ally Random, as well as Covenant Level 16. Energy Siphon, a... Ooh, Guardians, annually in the base deck. Two Sharpens as well. Cleanse units of all effects that don't benefit the Seraphs, so... The Sap gets cleared, the Spell Weakness gets cleared, the Spikes get cleared. Cool. Good cards to have in the base deck when this is our Seraph. Not. <laughs> I'm bringing not jokes back. Uh, seriously, though, we need to figure out what we're going to do here. Uh, Sigiled Seaweed? 50% chance to silence enemies as they enter the train? Or a 25% chance to kill small, wimpy enemies? I'll take that in the early game, at least. Take the sweep as well, just because it's also much more effective uh, aggressively. Not boss enemies gain spikes. That's the worst. <laughs> That's the absolute worst. Because anything else, I could have had the Tethys and just upgraded the Tethys with a Sharpen to have a really good time. But here, the Tethys will die if it tries to hit any wave of enemies now. Um, we can't take this without taking a ridiculous amount of damage. Ugh. Cool fates. Okay, let's set up on the next floor. Seriously? No train steward yet? Neither of the first two hands. All right. Okay. Um. Guess at the very least they're not doing enough damage for it to be the worst thing. But still, yikes, though. Add two spell weaknesses there. Guess I can't really do much else. At least I've stacked some spell weakness on you, so hopefully it's something. Overall, that's going to be more. We still ended up taking 11 damage, despite the fact that we didn't take the challenge there. That was... Not great. Helical Crystallis is very good. We have a lot of spell weakness in the deck. It synergizes with that very well. Offering token would be a way to play a card in our deck for free, but I don't think that's good enough. Uh, we'll turn down all of those as well, I think. All right, let's look for a frontliner that can go ahead of our Tethys. Plus 25 health from the Hearthstone. Love it. Well, it's not really what we wanted. I'll take Shattered Shell. I will give it quick. I will also give it plus 10 damage. It's a very good unit here. It's going to be so good for a very long period of time. But it solves the same problem that our Tethys already does. Worse. Because <laughs> it's also another unit that I have to draw. Spikes on the bottom floor actually make that more dangerous for us. set up like this so that I hopefully get the ability to somehow kill the conduit redirector here. Ooh, didn't, but oh, I guess, yeah, the Shattered Shell is already going to do enough by itself. Great. So I guess I'm going to go train steward, train steward, and then Frozen Lance here on the bottom line. If we already otherwise have no problems. Gotta make sure we get full heal there. And yikes, this isn't gonna do it. That surprises me one heck of one lot. The 
very least, we do stack some damage on you, and then... Again, we just get to watch people give us the absolute business. Uh, this is, <laughs> it's a, it's a bad start. It's a harsh start. It's feeling real personal. Game, why? Take an Ice Tornado, because we have a lot of spell weakness in the deck. It'd be great. One of those. There are a lot of spell upgrades I want, but right now I'm looking at the Stygian unit and going like, I need a tank from somewhere, and if the Shattered Shell isn't going to do it, and the Tethys isn't going to do it, and none of the Train Seers are going to do it, I guess I'm looking for like a guard of the... in the... a guard. There we go, guard of the unnamed or Titan Sentry. Titan Sentry fulfills the same role that our other two sweepers already do, so we'll take the guard of the unnamed. Uh, Sting's game plus 20 magic power. Well... That's a lot of magic power to put on a Sting. We're incentivized to get stings now that we're in encant trigger deck as well. I've already taken both of these. I don't want either. The heal is nice, but you need so much energy invested into it before it's useful. And also, whenever it's not useful, as in whenever you can't afford to play it, or you don't have any health that you can benefit from getting from it, uh, it's just an extra card. It's like a curse, effectively. Honestly, I'm setting up two different floors. Screw it. <laughs> we got the one clear floor here on the bottom. Uh, I should have put that on that first. So start stacking more spell weakness on Daedalus. matters. 25% of enemies dying to the infused mallet is working out real well for us. Okay. Maybe we just treat the Shattered Shell as a transitional unit that we can now throw away on the line that we don't intend to stay on. I wouldn't be entirely against that. I don't love it, but... There are worse things. Pretty good amount of damage. Thank you, Spell Weakness, for allowing that to happen. Draw X, enhance all cards drawn this way with lower cost. You know what? There are a lot of cards in this deck to hit with that. As long as I don't naturally take spikes, that should be fine. Lodestone Totem's also really good here as well as another thing to put between the Tethys and the Guard of the Unnamed if we're doing an Encant Floor. I didn't, I didn't mean to do an Encant Floor, but I couldn't find a tank. And the first tank I found was an Encant. And we've got a Lodestone Totem as well. We're going to move away from giving Sweet to Tether Sight and Main because we already have Sweep elsewhere. It's like... The game is kind of funneling me into it. Take extra energy. We have a lot of things that cost a lot in the deck and we want to be able to cost the Awakened Rail Spike for a decent amount. Okay, game one armor is really nice there. Honestly, we're mostly looking for health. Thankfully, I have sap to enemy units. So that's actually going to help the Guard of the Unnamed a lot. Okay. Now, honestly, the two energy siphons don't feel useful in this deck. Much at all. But the train stewards are less useful right now. Then let's get a, a damage spells on this floor cost negative one. Great. And then, you know what? I'm also going to remove two more train stewards. All right. 
Non boss enemy units restore all health when they move up a floor. This is going to be really challenging. I'm going to take it. Uh, I'm going to probably have to set up my Tethys floor on the second floor. I was honestly very much expecting here that I was going to get the Shattered Shell in the first hand, which was going to save us from the Absolver. It didn't, and I didn't, but whoops. Helical Crystallis is the kill there. And I heal my way out of that and set up another Siphon. I might have the Ice Tornado this turn, which would... No, didn't necessarily... I mean... Use the Awoken Rail Spike. There's the Ice Tornado. It costs zero on this floor because of the negative two from the Awoken Rail Spike as well as Tethys, so I have the ability to cast it here. Wouldn't have the ability to cast it anywhere else. However, on this floor... I mean, it's going to heal all health as it moves up to the next floor anyway, so I might as well just cast all these spells on this floor. For the sake of the encant triggers. Yeah, it looks an awful heck of a lot like I'm not going to be able to do anything about that Clips Guardian. I mean, I might be able to... Guardian offering it? So it might be able to die to the last shot of the Pyre before it actually has the ability to deal damage again. Nope. Took a lot of damage to it, though, first. Okay. Literally just enough at the end there. Oh my god. Although, you know... There was, what, Ice Storm? Yeah, Ice Tornado is still in the deck, so they would have gone up to the next floor with a bunch of spell weakness. I would have killed them there, but this is giving me a very clear example that, hey, your build is not strong enough. Oh, no. Volatile Gage. Actually, though? Remove those two energy siphons, and suddenly this is a good Volatile Gage deck. thing for the midline. I'm gonna take the Guardian Stone. Yeah, we're gonna have the Encant Trigger Floor and Awake. Very expensive healing spell. Happy to have it. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna want, like, expensive spells. Uh, and I'm also gonna want those spells upgraded. Plus 10 magic power on a Ice Tornado is huge. We can also lower its cost. That will override the Volatile Gauge, so the maximum cost of this is now 2. It's zero, zero, one, two is what it can roll. Uh, consume removal on an Awoken Rail Spike. So every time I play this, it'll upgrade three cards. It's just so hard to play it, but sure, let's do it. I, I want to see what I can get to happen there. Uh, random Awoken Consumable, Melting Consumable, or Stygian Guard Consumable. Uh, out of these? Probably Awoken, but we're probably turning it down. Yeah, let's turn that down. Fine. Alright, drawing three extra cards per turn is no joke. Non-boss enemy units gain multi-strike. So the overcharged tank is going to have multi-strike, but that's basically the only really difference. Uh, only really difference here. Only real difference here, rather. They're going to have a lot of damage because of these sycophants dying, though. Ah, uh, but I have lodestone totems, and I have... Yeah, I have totems to make that better. That should be fine. But they're not on the same floor. Hmm. Yeah, the Shattered Shell is going to be like a very sacrificial unit here. I'm worried about that. Okay. 
Set up a bunch of regen and armor there. Hey, got him instantly. Yeah, the Shatter Shell dies immediately as soon as I put it down there. Whoops. All right. Uh, let's start casting spells. Okay. That one's going to be... Oh, that's going to be so... Oh, good lord, that's going to be a bad time. We should, after that, kind of be fine, though. Three, mega upgrade them. Great. Screw it, I'm going to kill you. my life a lot easier up here. Okay, uh, we'll start out with the Helical Crystal and Frozen Lance. No more spells I can cast, so let's go for the armor and extra, sorry, the, the armor, the sap, everything that that triggers, as well as the spikes. Overcharged tank on the bot uh, top line here is pretty rough. I'm gonna just sap you again, I think, actually. Yep, you die before you do any damage. Uh, let's go Ice Tornado on the top line to make sure they die before they do any damage again. And then a Woken Rail Spike to draw out the rest of my deck and make it zero cost. So all of those should be pretty reliably zero cost now. You can see how many of our cards roll zero now. It's great. Uh, let's start with... I mean, we want to play the Guardian, right? Yeah, so we'll start with... I mean, we might as well just start with the Guardian. Okay. That worked out pretty well. I'm very, very glad that we took the risk there because the relic could mean everything. Pyre wall, your pyre gains 15 armor at the start of each battle. It'll make us a little more resilient. I just don't think it'll fix much. Don't think any of these really fit our builds. Quick. Quick fits it a little in terms of getting the Tethys Titan Bane to clear AoE before before they hit but also like our spells will do that more and more as we start cutting things down and just having like ice tornadoes more commonly and maybe even duping it in fact i'd very much love to dupe it uh and if it's not zero cost basically if it's not zero or one cost i can't really afford to play it right now turn that down also I have the ability to kill those chumps with the God of the Unnamed just having Sharpen on. And that means that if I do get to kill all of the chumps with the God of the Unnamed and whatever else I happen to have on that floor, Tethys doesn't just die to a bunch of spikes because it attacked first. Uh, okay, there's a dupe over here. That would be another Ice Tornado as well as a Relic where I could purchase one Relic but look at a whole lot of them. What relics am I looking for right now? Split Anvil? Double Incant Triggers? That's about it. I want the extra Ice Tornado. It's, it's a lot for us right now. Um, We're not a Frostbite deck, and I'm not about to pivot to put Frostbite into this build, and we have no Train Seward, so I'm going to take the money there. That sucked having to take the money there. That was not fun. Because the other side could have had so many good trinkets. Huh? All right. 
Tethers two totems, and yeah, I'll throw out the pretty extra encant trigger. I'll throw the sap out there. Great. And now this fight's going to be a lot easier. Took a ridiculously long period of time to get to that point, but it's nice to be here. Yeah, I'm gonna just stack a couple more of them on that floor. As much as I like the encantrigas on here, past a certain point, I don't need to start stacking them ridiculously. Past the point of I'm in danger, effectively. Helical Chrysalis is just a little too expensive for the other line. <gasps> That's sap! That's not spell weakness! Dang it! That's my bad. Eh, we're gonna lose that bottom line. That's fine. The bottom line is honestly there just to give us time to set up this. But again, this is just one floor that I've set up. It's one big floor. It's the same... It is my one big floor, is that I keep... Well, it's, I think it's... Not necessarily a good idea to say that it is my one big floor, as though I don't have others. I have many others. Uh, but the one big, very common floor is that I try and set up just one big floor. And try and get that to do all of our work for us. And that's not always going to work. Yep, about to let a clipped guardian go by. We've just gone both, uh, past both of the Ice Tornadoes in the deck, so I know I'm not about to draw one of those as well. I'm going to sap you again so that you try and do, or rather to try and get you to deal as little damage as possible. I don't want to cast the spell here because I want to cast a bigger spell to get all of the spell weakness I put on the boss. Again, all of the spell weakness, it only has three. Because I was looking at it and going, ah, oh, yes, eight spell weakness, but that's the sap. That'll do. And you know what? I'm actually just going to sap the boss here. Give myself a much better chance to kill it on the next floor. Because if I do, the Clipped Guardian never gets to the top of the map. Nice Tornado. Again, we only just got over the line there. But also, again, I likely would have been able to kill it with a tornado next turn. I'm so glad that we have the sap totem there. Alright. Ancient Synergy. I mean, Channel Song, has, there are a lot of things Channel Song can hit, but Ancient Synergy is uh, three times 40 damage to the front enemy line. Yes, I am going to be removing more cards from this deck, but I'm also going to be adding cards. Uh, draw an extra card, so now we draw nine cards a turn. I'd really like to get some of those restores out of the deck. Some double removal here is appealing, as well as the Merchant of Magic is always pretty appealing. Make that consistently more castable. Reroll double stack. Sap six is wild. I wonder if I want to wait and try and give that holdover. 
No, I cast it a lot of the time. Like, I draw into it relatively commonly. I'll, I'll reduce its cost since commonly low cost for us. Uh, I don't think I want to buff anything and get consumed there. Let's double remove two of these restores. And then upgrade the champion for more spell weakness or damage spells costing less. Honestly, damage spells costing less makes... Yeah, I, th I think that's way better. Uh, it, it makes more sense because it'll allow me to combo cast basically every single card now that I'm removing the uh, restores especially. Wilt Wings. The Wilt Wings will deal a lot of damage to us. They deal five and then they die and then they deal another five. So 10 per. It's real rough. Uh, as much as I want the 400 gold here, can I take it? I think I can. No. Maybe I can't. Specifically because of the Dark Wings getting the Harvest gain 15 armor. If they also have spell damage immunity and I have to kill them, like I have to throw three big spells at them to actually get them to die, that's not going to be worth it. All it takes is like three of them getting past us with a decent health value, which they would get past us with. And then life is just tragic for us. So I already know that next turn I'm going to draw the Guard of Your Names. Because I didn't draw it last turn. And it was the only minion left that I had in the deck. Okay. Trying to find ways of dealing with the second floor rather than just overkilling the top floor. May as well get rid of the Shattered Shell now. Uh, four, eight. Okay, so I'll play that. Then Woken Rail Spike for three more cards. Great. It's more than enough. I'd also use the sharpen. Oh, that's fine. It doesn't matter because, again, I don't really care about that bottom floor. That's not what that bottom floor is there for. Alright. Oh, you gotta love a hand like this. All of them zero cost. Scroll to another floor, two, one, but a lot of them have been hit by the Awoken Rail Spike and have therefore been uh, enhanced by having lower costs, which overrides the Volatile Gauge, or the cost reduction on the Ice Tornadoes as well. Oh, it's just working so well. You love to see it. You love to see it. Definitely start with a nice tornado for the clear air. Start sharpening. Yeah, these all rolled threes. Oof. Uh, let's give you an energy siphon. Go back to this floor and get an awake for a little bit more regen. That regen's probably not going to come in handy, really, at all. Because after you get down to 25 health, no matter what you regen, you're still dying. But here, we get the ability to cast all of our... Hang on. Go. All of our spells to get all of the sap that we need. Yes. And now you don't really damage me at all. Great. 
Honestly, I actually think it was probably a bit easier to take the... Bump that. Uh, it probably would have been a bit easier to take the... I could have taken Pyro there, actually. I probably should have, because it does override. It would have been easier there to take the challenge than I had suspected, but I still think it would have been a bad idea. Like, easier, but I still don't think it would have been a great idea. Uh, okay, I'm going over this way. Looking for good spells. Uh, sorry, good spells. I'm looking for good upgrades for health. Well, eh, you can camp for armor. These, these do get, no, they get armor from the Guardian Stone already. I don't actually have to upgrade them. It's fine. We go to the Relic Shop. But in particular, I wanted the Hellvent to duplicate the Ancient Synergy right here. Spells gain an extra upgrade slot. I would love that if I was over the other side of the map, but I'm not, so I can't. Dang. Enemies gain negative one damage, and they take two damage whenever they move between floors. Sure, that'll solve a lot of problems for us. And then there's no, yeah, I can't afford a removal or anything like that. All right, start off the chase. Let's go. Oh, maybe I set up my top floor. It gives me the, no, 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 because I have to have the ability to launch a nuke at the boss after the boss walks away from Tethys after gaining a bunch of spell damage, which is why I still have to set up on the midline. with that didn't pop down the shattered shell honestly this uh this this infused mallet has been working overtime for us it is uh it is making everything real good okay. and just another ancient synergy oh god those ancient synergies are so good in this deck right now like yes we have removed spells but they're still very powerful and they are directed to the front target. It's just like a big helical crystallis for us right now, effectively. You want to think about it like that? So just pre-sapping all of you. <laughs> so good. Uh, just launch out all of that before we spell weakness you, just in case we get to throw a tornado at you on a different floor or something. Again. Helco Crystallis. Then we just have easy spells until all the rest of you are down. Do I, I still need on the bottom floor? Honestly, I only need the one sharpen. See our last tornado on this floor. Dang. Hit the Seraph. Wasn't thinking about that at the time. Probably should have been. Great. So we were prepared by the time the Pyre Wings came out uh, for their sweep because of the guards, uh, the guardian stone. Glad that ended up working out for us. That said, we're also just killing them all with spells. Finally playing all of these out as well. It's... Well, that one's gonna get by us. Are you? Ancient Synergy. No, that's not Ancient Synergy yet. Yeah, I'm not going to Ancient Synergy at all. Just going to focus on this floor. So you will deal some damage to me, but yeah, you don't even go through the pile wall. We're behind too many pile walls for you. Oh, 
honestly, we're back into the just cast everything kind of realm. Because if you have enough sap on you, you can go through to the top line and we'll be fine. Still. Alright, working rail spike for three great cards to get that hit. Alright. I think I might just have enough armor that we would be good on this floor anyway. Almost. This is the closest we've been to killing the Seraph just with the floor before we actually cast a bunch of spells. I think that's worth I think that's worth something. Admittedly not much, but I think it's worth something. Give you some more spell weakness, I think. Finally lost enough sap. Yeah, there you go. Now you can actually start hitting me. Taking a bunch of damage to those spikes. I know this is... I know this is a similar build to a lot of builds that I've done before with these, but... This is the this is the problem I was having at the start of the series, right? That I pointed out at the time, which is I can't necessarily tell the game what to give me. And if it gives me and and if I keep avoiding builds based on not wanting to repeat similar builds, I end up killing runs. And that's what I was doing a lot earlier on in the series. Uh, and the vast majority of feedback I got was don't. <laughs> Just just let the run go where it wants to go. I, I do apologize if that ends up in a similar area for, for a couple of these. I, uh, I, I am trying to keep it in mind consistently here. Covenant rank 17 adds a dead weight to your starting deck. It's fine. As well as getting two more golden cards there. Great. Uh, the Covenant rank 17 as well now. <laughs> Wanda, I finally, finally caught up to you. Wanda went straight to rank seven, uh, rank, uh, rank sixteen rather. Uh, after what I want to say, two days, maybe. It's taken me a month to catch back up, but here we are. I'm gonna continue making my climb until I catch gym mate, and then eventually until I catch the little covenant plaque up there. But for the moment, my name's been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Monster Train. Hopefully, you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully, we'll see you next time.